What's up guys and welcome back to see you out there. Welcome to another Wednesday video and welcome to another how to. Today we're going to tackle how to fish live shrimp. The best ways to rig it, the best applications and when to use it guys. Let's get into it. Live shrimp. Yo! What's up guys and welcome back to see you out there. Welcome to another how-to video and today we're going to discuss fishing with a live shrimp. This isn't a live shrimp, this is a DOA half ounce shrimp imitation, a great lure by the way. But we're going to use this as a, as a dummy, as an analog for what we're discussing today. So what I want to start out by talking about is three ways to rig a live shrimp. The way to put this on the hook so it'll stay on better and give it a longer amount of time in front of your fish so you can catch it. Once we discuss the three ways to hook a live shrimp, then we'll go into different rigs. I've got five different ways you can rig them, styles you can present those uh, live shrimp to fish and in different scenarios. And we'll talk about each one and then we'll talk about applications for that briefly. So first off, let's start with our live shrimp. We all know uh, what they are, how to work with them, what to do with them, but sometimes there's how do you hook a live shrimp. And there are several different ways and I'm going to show you each one of those. The first way that we've talked about in my videos before in the how-to videos, uh, the popping cork video more specifically, was I like to take a live shrimp and I like to go in that last digit, that last little part of the tail, the last segment, and I like to come from the bottom to the top and I like to hook that fish like th that shrimp like that and then I like to let him sit on there and then that's how I like to present him. With the weight forward like this, I get a better cast and I can cast them more accurately. They don't spin through the air or tend to get caught in the wind and, and throw kind of weird. They throw flat and straight and they throw like a lure. If you're pitching them free line, which is a way we'll talk about here shortly, you'll find that you can cast them further and you can cast them better this way. That's how I like to hook them. You can do that with a circle hook. This is a 3 aught Mutu light circle hook, which is what I prefer. Uh, you can hook it like that with a J hook if that's your style. You hook it like that with a treble hook. Whatever way you, whatever hook you like to use, that system or that technique will work. Through the bottom, last segment, out through the very top, and then you throw them with the weight forward. That's one way, my favorite way, to rig a live shrimp. Another equally successful way, equally popular way, and absolutely works perfectly, is to hook them behind the head. So in our fake shrimp here, you can see there's a, a little weight here in the bottom, but if you're looking at a live shrimp, the black area like that will be around midpoint here. And what that is, is that's all the internal organs of that shrimp. That's his, all his guts. That's the vitals. You don't want to hit that with a hook or you kill your live shrimp. So what you can do is you come ahead of that guy up near the horn, the little horn that sits right in here, and you're going to hook him between the head, the eyes and the horn, and those vitals, and you're going to run him side to side. That is a perfect presentation. That shrimp can still crawl, he can still walk, he can still swim. My problem with this presentation is when you throw it, it has a tendency to want to spin because you're not throwing it weight forward. And I also feel like that when it gets in the current, that it'll have a chance, it'll have a tendency to want to spin. Millions and millions and millions and millions of fish have been caught on live shrimp rigged behind the horn. It works beautifully. If that's your style, it works perfectly. There's nothing wrong with it. Like we've talked about in a lot of our videos, it's about confidence. If you're more confident hooking it in the tail, if you're more confident hooking it in the head, they both work fine. Find what works best for you. All right guys, so the third and final way we're gonna talk about rigging our live shrimp is a technique you see a lot with jig heads. So you see Corey and I throw jig heads under docks and we take it and we rig it the same way. We take our jig head, we go through the bottom, we come out through the top and we chunk him in there like that. There is, is a practice that is better and will secure the fish of the hook better. 
When you're throwing jig heads, you have a larger diameter hook like this straight shank hook that came out of the lure. And a lot of times the shank of the hook or the diameter of the hook metal itself will be as wide as the shrimp. So it doesn't have a lot of meat to hook into. So what you'll see a lot of boys do down south, and I've seen it here in Texas too, is they'll take that last digit where I like to hook it and they'll trim that off. This doesn't kill the shrimp. This in no way hurts the shrimp. He's fine. But then they'll take their shanked hook and they'll thread it inside the shrimp for a little ways. Quarter inch, half inch, something to that effect. And then they'll come back out the top dead center. And then they'll rig him like this. So now your shrimp is alive. He can still crawl. He's seeping a little bit of shrimp juice out the back and his vitals aren't injured. He is fine. Your weight forward, so your casting is going to be accurate. You've got more hook inside the, the body of the shrimp, so you've got a better connection to it. And you can use that way as well. So this will work for Carolina rigging. This will work for split shots. This will work for all your rigging techniques, free line, everything. This is actually a very, very, very secure way to keep your shrimp on the hook. Corey and I do not do this a lot, and it's honestly because I don't think about it when we're free lining or when we're live baiting with shrimp. I never think about doing it. Um, I keep these on the boat at all times. It just never occurs to me. I need to start doing this more often because the problem with using live shrimp is they come off the hook easy. You throw it in there, a pinfish pecks at it, you've lost your shrimp. He just bumped it off the hook. Cut that tail off, thread it up in there a little ways, quarter inch, three eighths, something to that effect. Come back out the top and give that a try and see if that increases your hookups. Again, guys, these are my three favorite ways to hook a live shrimp. This isn't it, this isn't all of them, and this dang sure isn't the gospel, but this is my favorite three ways to hook a live shrimp. If you have a better technique, another technique, or a different opinion, drop it in the comments down below and share it with us because I would love to learn a new way. These are the three ways I've always done it. I'm never, ever, ever opposed to learning something new. So if you've got a way other than head, tail, or clipping the tail off and threading it that you like to do it, share it with me. One thing I will try to steer you guys away from is hooking your shrimp in the middle. That is, that is not good. The shrimp will die, the shrimp will fold, they get in the current and they can't swim. So do whatever you can not to hook it in the, in the tail there or in the middle of the shrimp or you'll see sometimes people come through the bottom in the middle. They're not in the vitals, they're not killing it, but they're hooking it in the middle. Make sure that you hook it towards one of the ends, uh, either the horn end or back to the tail end like we talked about, and give that shrimp the best opportunity to give as free and as natural a presentation as he can with a hook in him. Anyway guys, that's my three favorite ways to hook a live shrimp. Let's get into now rigs and when to use them. Alright guys, so the first way we're going to talk about rigging is weedless. We've, I'm sorry, free lined. So we've talked about this in the past on other videos, but all a free line is, is we're gonna take our live shrimp, we're gonna have our main line run down to our 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. 20 pound fluorocarbon leader is tied to our circle hook, our J hook, our treble hook, whatever you want. And you're gonna have two to three feet of this 20 pound fluorocarbon back to a double uni knot to your main line. If you're using 20 pound monofilament, there's really no need to have a leader, just tie it straight to your hook, put it straight on your shrimp. In my application, I throw 15 pound power pro braid with a double uni, which we have a double uni knot video in this how-to section back in the playlist. And we tie that down to our three-aught Mutu light circle hook. And then we take that shrimp, like we've talked about, and we thread it bottom to top. This is our presentation. No weight, no split shot, no swivels. This gives us a pure and clean presentation. The fish is allowed to swim, which when you hook him at the water, you'll see he's trying to swim away from that hook. It's like hooking a croaker through the, the, the anal fin. He wants to swim away from that hook. It's the same situation in this instance. The shrimp wants to swim away from the hook, and you'll find that he'll have better action and swim away from you. So applications for this are endless. This application can work for you in any scenario you're fishing. If you're fishing three to five feet of water over an oyster bar, and you feel that the trout are up high or you want a slow presentation, there's not a lot of current that day. Free lining, flip him out back. Let him swim away from you, let him get down. Feed him line. Keep your bell open or keep your bell, your spool disengaged with your finger on it and just keep feeding it line. Make sure that you don't let the line get tight and the shrimp is just spinning in the current or spinning behind the boat. If he's drifting away from you, continue to feed line. Continue to feed line. Continue to feed line until you get a bite. 
And what you'll see is you'll feel that fish take it and that fish will run with your live shrimp. There's no wait for him to be alerted to. It's just a free swimming shrimp. So he'll grab it and swim off like normal. If you're using a circle hook, if you're throwing a bait caster, all you're gonna do is gauge your spool. The tension will set this hook for you. It'll find the corner of the mouth, it'll do the work. No need for a hook set. If you're throwing a spinning reel, the line starts coming off your finger, he's got it. Close the bell, line goes tight and engages. Circle hook does the same thing, finds the corner of the mouth, catches the fish for you. It's very easy. If you're a J hook or a treble hook, exact same application. The only thing is you get to put the Roland Martin to him. Line's running off. Click your bell, engage your spool with a bait caster, set the hook, you got the fish. Same difference, the only thing you're eliminating between these two hooks is the hook set, which as a fisherman I know is the best part of fishing is the hook set. But I find that I lose more fish, less fish with the circle hook than I do with the J hook because with this left up my own devices, I'll get a little jumpy and I'll have a tendency to want to set the hook too soon. Whereas this one does the work and it knows the timing of when to set the hook. So another application for freelining shrimp we've talked about in other videos is the jetties. You've got a nice current, trout are feeding up high, you have a lot of structure underneath you and you don't want to get hung up in that structure by using a Carolina rig or a fish finder rig or a split shot, which we'll talk about next, is you can throw this up there and he's going to sink naturally from the weight of your hook. The shrimp's going to do all the work and the fish are going to find him. Let him drip, same thing, keep feed line. Keep feeding line, don't ever let the line get tight because the current's just gonna hold the shrimp in place and spinning. We don't want spins or twists in our line and we don't want our live shrimp spinning because he's not doing his job, he's not swimming naturally. Um, another application for this is docks, piers, seawalls. If you don't know what's on the bottom or what the bottom contours or the bottom structure or the dangers underneath a dock or a pier or a seawall, if you throw a Carolina rig in there or if you throw a fish finder rig in there, then you could hang the bottom. A great way to start prospecting is a free line of shrimp underneath a dock. Roll up to your dock, power pole down, eye pilot down, anchor down, whatever your technique for stopping your boat and holding it position is, and cast that live shrimp free line up against the pylons. Your black drum, your redfish, your sheep's head, all these fish, your trout, these fish are all hanging out in the shade in the middle of the day, waiting for a prey item to come by with the current. Well, if you pitch this guy in there and let him swim underneath the dock, that represents that prey item coming through with the current. Hit every dock, throw it at every pylon if you're freelining. Every one that you can hit, cast that dock, let that shrimp have a minute or two, bring him in and continue to cast him. You never know what pylon or what piece of structure on a bridge or what piece of corrugation in a seawall is gonna be holding a sheep's head or where a black drum is gonna be or a redfish is gonna be. So I think that it is a bad idea to roll up to a dock and make one cast underneath it, not to get a bite and leave. I love fishing docks. You guys have seen that in the Dock Monster videos. Prospect those docks with a free line shrimp when you get there first. You pull up to that dock, it's six foot of water and you're ready to fish it. Rig somebody free line, rig somebody on a jig head and start prospecting. Throw that thing underneath the shade as much as you can and let that fish work at the top of the water. Let him slink sink slowly, let that trout find him, let that black drum, let that sheep's head find him. That's not working, then start going down lower. Take that free line shrimp and add a pinch weight to him or switch to a jig head or a Carolina rig, which we'll talk about shortly. That's another great application for a free line shrimp is structure. You don't know what's on the bottom or you do know what's on the bottom, there's tons of snags. Free line that guy back in there. 15 pound braid, double uni knot to 20 pound fluorocarbon, give yourself two, three feet of fluorocarbon leader, down to your circle hook, J hook your treble hook, tail hook your shrimp, throw him back under a dock, up against a seawall, or up against whatever structure you're fishing, and let the shrimp do the work and see if those fish are sitting up high. Next application we're gonna talk about for free, run, free lining shrimp are just open grass flats. An open grass flat is a wonderland for fishing that is overlooked a lot because when we look at it we just see a flat it's two foot deep it's scattered grass scattered shell and mud and we don't see any structure we don't see a dock or a piling or a log or a oyster bar or whatever we're looking for that we think the fish need those flats have a lot of relief and they have a lot of structure it's just not what you and i associate with structure so where the grass stops 
and you have a pothole and there's six, eight inches of grass and then there's a mud or a sand flat. That relief gives a redfish or a flounder or a trout somewhere to hide up against and let the current sweep bait past him. He's got an edge somewhere he can hide and ambush his prey, especially flounder and redfish. Flounder and redfish love potholes. Back home, that's how we target them. So if you're on a grass flat or you're on a mud flat and the current or the wind is moving away from you, say east to west, power pole down or eye pilot down, take that live shrimp, throw him as far as you can out across that flat, and then feed him line. Let that wind and let that current sweep that live shrimp across that flat. Obviously, you don't want to bail out 200 yards of Power Pro, you know, a reasonable amount, 75 yards, 50 yards, whatever you feel comfortable with when you still feel engaged with that shrimp and just dole that line out. Don't take the line and just dump 20 yards of it out into the water and let it go from there. You'll never indicate the bite and then you have a tendency for that stuff to start knotting up. So it's tedious. It takes a little bit of time and patience, but feed that line out to that shrimp and let the current wind sweep him and let someone on that flat find him. You feel someone get it, let him have it. Close your bell, engage your spool, and if you're circle hooking or J hooking, set the hook or not, and you'll find your fish. This is a great way to fish for trout. It's a great way to fish for redfish, and it'll catch flounder too on a shallow enough flat. So another way to fish a live shrimp on a free line is on an open flat. All right, guys, so free line live shrimp, we've talked about open water, we've talked about jetties, we've talked about docks and structure, and we've talked about open flats. So guys, that to me is the main, main ideal locations that I'm going to free line a shrimp. Primarily, primarily, I'm going to throw that around structure. Structure for me is a great time to throw live shrimp. I will throw them in deeper water. I will throw them on grass flats. Um, it's not my first go-to option. Typically in those options, you're looking at a pop and cork style rig, uh, which we'll talk about shortly, but those do work. And you'll find if you try them, it works. Um, so free line live shrimp, how do you rig them? Where do you use them? Let's go on to option number two, guys. All right, guys, so let's talk about rigging technique number two, and that's a free line shrimp, but we're gonna add a pinch weight. Pinch weights are a great way, or split shots, are a great, great way to add just a touch of weight. If you're trying to free line that shrimp in five foot of water, six foot of water, seven foot of water over an oyster reef in the middle of the summer, and you feel like that shrimp's just not quite getting down to where they're at, but you don't want a Carolina rig it because you don't want to get your weight hung up in the oyster shell, this is a great way to add a small amount of weight incrementally because a lot of times your split shots will come in little kits like this. And it, it'll come in eight pounds all the way down to whatever that small size is. It looks smaller than a BB. I don't know what that weighs. Who knows what it weighs. But you can take these guys and you can take your, your leader. You've got your 20 pound fluorocarbon and you've got your circle hook. And then you can step up a little ways. And you can pin this split shot you just take him and put him on your leader. Take your pliers and pinch it. Let me pinch it for you guys here real quick and I'll show you. So I take my pliers and I just pinch that split shot. That's it. I just pinch him on there. So now what I've done is I'm still free lining this shrimp. I've got a minute little bitty weight on there. And what I can do now is throw this out in that five, six, seven foot of water. Maybe you're tossing around a dock that's 10 foot deep. Some of the docks we fish in our dock monster videos are 10, 12, 14 foot deep. I like free lining shrimp. If I want it to sink slowly, I can take one of these, take the smallest size split shot I've got, pinch it on here, cast it up next to that dock, and it's going to sink, but it's not going to sink so fast that it's going to sink through the water column and pass any fish it may be suspended. Our sheep's head on a pylon or our trout underneath there or a school of reds that sit high. This isn't going to sink fast, so fast past them, they don't get a chance to make a move on it. They still see it because it's a slow fall. You're just taking this little tiny split shot, we're hooking it on our leader, and we're picking our size split shot based on the depth and how fast we want it to sink or how fast the current's taken away from us. Sometimes at the jetties when we're fishing for trout out there, we're free lining shrimp, but the current's ripping. You got a big outgoing tide on a full moon, the tide's ripping out of the jetties, and the shrimp's just not sinking. So we still want to free line him because we want to fish up high in the water column, but a weight's not enough to get him to sink be amazed how much a split shot will do. That split shot doesn't weigh enough to get down and get settled in the rocks and cause you problems every cast. And it doesn't sink so fast that you're taking away the free line application that you're trying to do. Split shot 
I know we all think a grandpappy at the brim pond with split shots, but they work great in saltwater too, guys. So if you want to slow your free line presentation down, but you want to sink some, deeper water, stronger current, uh, a lot of structure you don't want to get hung in, a split shot, guys. Add that little $4 box of split shots to you to last you 20 years, and you'll find that you'll find a lot of applications for a split shot. Same thing with fishing the flats. You got a little bit of current. Same thing with fishing docks. Same things with fishing seawall. This application doesn't require as much explanation as freelining because you are freelining the shrimp. You're just adding that little tiny pinch weight, guys. So step two or method two for presenting live shrimp is adding a split shot. All right, guys, let's go on to step three. All right, guys, the third way that I like to present a live shrimp is called a fish finder rig. A fish finder rig is it's a neat, interesting way, and I learned something new about a fish finder rig last week from a buddy of mine at work, Ryan. I'd never heard of it. We use this a lot back home live baiting. We use it a lot for snapper fishing, and I've seen a lot of cool applications, but I'm gonna add a twist to it. I'm gonna add a fish finder rig hack in here for you as a bonus. So what a fish finder rig is, is it's the same application as our free line. We've got our main line, whatever our main line is, down to our leader, whatever that is, without a swivel, with a double uni, and then we're taking our weight, and our weight is not separated from our hook. Our weight sits on top of our hook. This is called a fish finder rig. And what a fish finder rig does is you've got more weight, so you're getting to the bottom, but it's not pinned behind a swivel like a Carolina rig is, which we'll talk about next. The swivel isn't there, so the weight is free to move near the hook. And what you'll find is that the weight will fall faster than your bait. And then when the weight hits the bottom, your bait then follows and your bait will fall at a slower pace. So if I'm in 10 foot of water, I take my fish finder rig and I cast it under the dock. We'll have to edit that out. And I cast my fish finder rig under a dock, well the weight's gonna sink fast. And then it's gonna leave however much distance there is between my weight and my shrimp. If I throw it in there and give it slack, then it could be a couple feet. And then that shrimp is basically free lining. And what's happening is this weight is anchoring it down and we can give it line. We can give it a little bit of slack and let the current pull it and separate it from that, separate it from that weight. So a fish finder rig is a fun rig because it's not terminal tackle that's a designated distance from your hook like a Carolina rig. If I throw a swivel right here, 14 inches away from this hook, that swivel's there. That swivel is there. If those fish are finicky and they're a little bit tackle shy, there's a swivel there I can't get rid of. Well, obviously I don't want a six foot leader with a swivel way back there because then I'm gonna get into tangle issues. So I can throw a fish finder rig and I can let this weight, this little quarter ounce egg weight, I can let it move up and down the line and it's gonna take a leader shy fish and it's gonna keep him from seeing terminal tackle and it's also gonna allow me to separate the weight from the hook by a greater distance when it sinks. Uh, applications for this are the same as everything we've talked about. We can throw this at the jetties. The only problem with that is it will get hung in the jetties. So what you have to do is you have to throw this against the jetties, not all the way up against it, because remember, we've talked about in our other videos that jetties are stacked. If you see five feet wide at the top, it's probably 40 feet wide at the bottom, 20 feet wide. So you're probably sitting over the top of rock. So you want to throw it up against the jetty close to it. And as you feel rock, you want to bounce it off of that rock until you find a good sandy resting spot and then find the fish that are cruising at the base of the jetty, not over the jetty. Over the jetty is where we want the free lined application or the split shot because we're not sinking down into the structure and breaking off. Another great way for fish finder rigging is deep structure. If you're fishing for mangrove snapper in the Gulf and you're in 25, 30 foot of water and the mangroves are leader shy and they won't hit a free line bait, you can throw an egg weight on and let it sink. A buddy Ryan at work told me something the other day. He's a very accomplished offshore angler. He told me something I'd never heard of. What his family likes to do is they'll take the weight with the bait on it and they'll hold it and they'll open the bell on whatever they're using, a spinning reel or a large uh, conventional reel, and then they'll sink the egg weight. So the egg weight's going down and it's pulling line off the spool and it's going all the way to the bottom. 20 foot, 40 foot, 80 foot, 100 foot, whatever. So now I've got the bait in my hand, 100 feet, 40 feet, whatever it is above that egg weight that is sitting on the bottom, then just toss that bait over. It's anchored to the bottom via the egg weight. 
that bait is going to sink, but it's going to sink slowly and naturally as if it was free lined. And that can take a finicky trout, a finicky mangrove snapper, a finicky trigger fish, and that can make them bite because they don't see the Carolina rig, they don't see the swivel, they don't see the egg weight in the way. Thought that was a very, very, very cool way to fish a fish finder rig. Ryan, I appreciate that. If you watch this video, that was a neat idea. I've been doing this a long time and I never heard that idea. Another application for fish finders is on a flat. So we talked about free lining. Um, if we've got a very strong current and we want to anchor that bait down and we don't want to station, we don't want to anchor it in place where it's spinning in the current, is we can toss this fish finder rig out behind us. We can let the weight hit and then we can just slowly feed line out and let that fish or let that shrimp just slowly creep out of that egg weight and just slowly slide away. So we're anchoring it down, but then we're free lining it out behind that egg weight. So the egg weight's gonna hold everything in place. Our main line is there, we're good. And then we're just kind of feeding line. Everything's feeding through that egg weight. And then when we do get a bite, we catch a fish, everything comes together in one package. We don't have a swivel back here that's grabbing grass or grabbing shell or grabbing mud. It's a clean retrieval with a fish finder rig. All right guys, so those are my applications for a fish finder rig. This is a rig that I'll primarily use in deeper water. Um, I don't use it a lot in mud flats. I don't use it a lot over oyster shells, obviously because of the weight, um, but it is a very useful rig and it is a very good way to get your live shrimp to the bottom and to fish an area slower without it just going straight to the bottom and then being anchored there waiting for a fish to find it like a Carolina rig, which is what we're gonna talk about now. So let's move into Carolina rig. All right guys, our fourth way that we can rig live shrimp is on what's called a Carolina rig. Everyone knows what a Carolina rig is, whether you know it's called a Carolina rig or not. And that's where we have our weight above a swivel that runs to a leader all the way down to our hook. This leader length can vary depending on what you're fishing. Um, I fish a two to three foot leader in most applications. You'll find guys in the Florida Keys fishing mutton with a 30, 40, and sometimes 50 foot long leader. Depends on what works in your area. The water's clear down there. Mutton are very finicky. We don't have that problem with finicky fish here on the Texas coast, so we don't have to worry about leaders that long. A two to three foot leader will suffice in every application uh, here along the Texas coast and along the Gulf Coast everywhere. If you're not fishing for muttons, um, down in the Keys, you can get away with a two to three foot leader, red snapper, groupers, uh, amber jacks, redfish, flounders, everything. So what a Carolina rig is, is a Carolina rig is basically like an anchor rig. Think of it as you're anchoring it to the bottom. So you've got your, your weight is here. It's above that leader and it can't get any closer to the hook. It can move on our main line, but it's going to stay anchored to our swivel down to our hook. And we're going to throw this in. It's a little bit awkward to throw. It's a little cumbersome. It's not very accurate because of the way it flies through the air. But we're gonna throw this in. The weight's gonna immediately go to the bottom and it's gonna anchor that bait down. And that bait is gonna be in the current, whatever the current's doing, and it's gonna stay there until a fish finds it. Um, this is a very, very effective way to fish. Fish finds it, fish leaves with it, set the hook, weight's out of the way, you fight the fish in. This is a great way to fish deeper water um, during the spring and fall months I'll fish the jetties with a Carolina rig. I'll use just enough weight to hold the bottom and it not start moving with the current. I don't like a lot of weight. Um, if I can get by with one ounce, I will. I won't throw a six ounce just because I have it. I try to use the lightest amount of weight I can get away with because I don't like that big splash when I throw it in the water and I don't like that big bulky weight at the end of the line. So we're fishing the jetties, which is one place you'll fish a Carolina rig. It's just like fishing the fish finder rig. Don't throw a Carolina rig up into the jetties or up into the rocks because this thing's going to sink immediately and it's going to find its way into a little crevice. It's going to find its way into a little hole and he's going to get wedged. And you're going to have to break this thing off and retie and you're going to burn through a lot of tackle. Find where you think the end of the jetties, the bottom of the jetties, the base are and throw there. Let it sink and make sure you've got your finger on your line while it's falling. And if you feel rocks, you can feel it, especially with braid today and the sensitivity of the rods we have today. You can feel that rock bounce it bounce it bounce it it settles it feels good okay click the reel engage the spool engage the bell there's no need to leave your bell open or your spool disengaged here because we're not trying to free line we're waiting on a fish to hit it we're waiting on a fish to run with it and pull and then we're going to set the hook or we're going to start reeling with a circle hook to set the hook uh, deep docks and deep structures if you know for a fact 
that there are no obstructions underneath, there's no snags or hangs, and the redfish are on the bottom, it's a great way to get down there. The only problem around docks and pylons you'll find with the Carolina rig is this right here, the fluorocarbon leader or the monofilament leader you use it. As we know, heavy structure comes with heavy snags, it comes with barnacles, it comes with oysters. So as soon as that redfish grabs it and he runs around the corner of that dock and you've got to force him back around, the braids are abrasion resistant and it'll protect you from a break off. As soon as you get to the fluorocarbon, you're not. So this will work. You will get a lot of redfish bites on the bottom. You will catch a lot of fish, but you'll lose as many fish because that fluorocarbon or that monofilament leader is going to get tore off. So that application works. See what works best for you. If you've got a heavy enough tackle that you can force that fish out from underneath that dock or out from underneath that structure or off that seawall, by all means, go with it. This technique will work great for you. This is another great way to fish for mangrove snappers with live shrimp. You find your structure, you throw it near it, let it sink to the bottom, let it sit in the current, and that little mangrove snapper will find it, and you can increase your leader length and decrease your leader size. Mangrove snapper, clear water redfish, clear water trout, they can get finicky, they can get leader shy. So if you're throwing that 30 pound leader on a circle hook and you're not getting any bites, but you know the fish are there, this is your problem. It's not your bait, it's not your presentation, your leader size. Decrease your leader size incrementally and see what happens when you find your bite, what size you're throwing. Back when I was, <coughs> I was guiding, I used to keep from 80 all the way down to 20 on the boat. And if the fish weren't biting the live shrimp and they weren't feeding on it, well, I would decrease the leader size on one rod as a test. I'm running 30 on everybody because we're fishing for bull reds with live shrimp. I want to see if it's the leader size is why the bull reds aren't buying. Well, I would take somebody's rod and decrease them to 20. If that didn't work, I knew the reds were there. They just weren't eating our shrimp. I'd decrease somebody to 15. You can land a bull red on 15 pound test leader. You just can't horse him. You have to play him. You can't yoke him in. You can't snake the drag or horse the drag all the way down and then just force that fish to the surface. You have to be a little more careful when you decrease your leader size. But in a Carolina rig, you'll find that decreasing your leader size can help a uh, leader shy fish bite a little more effectively. Uh, Carolina rig can work great in open water. It can work great in a flat situation if you're throwing two potholes. Throw your lure to the pothole, make sure that it falls in the pothole and let it sit there. Like we talked about with free lining, potholes create relief for redfish to sit in. And if they're in there or if they're coming in and out of those potholes, an anchored down shrimp that's not leaving that pothole, that's as far as he can go. It's gonna sit there until the fish comes into that pothole looking for prey. He comes in there, your shrimp is anchored down in that pothole, he'll find it and you're on. It's more of a waiting game, but it's very effective. Another application for a Carolina rig, and then we'll move on to the next style, is drains and guts out of the marshes. You guys that fish the marsh, you know those areas that are two to three feet of water. The tide's coming out of there and there's a good tidal movement. You know the redfish and trout finder are moving out of that back lake. You can take this guy, you can throw it behind the boat right in the middle of the marsh and let it sit there. Let him sit there in the current and let those fish that are coming out, let them find it. It's anchored down, it's not gonna drift against the bank, it's not gonna drift out of the strike zone, it's gonna stay where you put it. Carolina rig works great in that application as well. Pin your live shrimp to it to the tail so he's not spinning. In this situation, if you head spin him or head hook him, he's gonna spin. So hook him in his tail, chunk him out there, put the rod and rod holder, let Roddy do the work, throw that circle hook on there. So while you're chilling, enjoying the day, drinking a beer, listening to the radio, redfish comes on and grabs it. Carolina rig kept it in place, it never left. Circle hook does the job when the fish takes it because you've got your spool engaged or your bell closed. All you gotta do is pick the rod up, hand it to your kid, fight the fish. Very, very effective way for a Carolina rig. Let's move on to our fifth way, we've already done a pop and cork video before, so we're gonna do a fifth technique that's not pop and cork. If you're a pop and cork guy, we have a video uh, in the playlist that's on pop and corks and we discuss using live shrimp. So I'm gonna use, the fifth way is gonna be another way that you've seen Corey and I fish live shrimp uh, on our Doc Monster videos and we'll discuss that as our fifth way, guys. So hang on one second. All right, guys, so the fifth and final way, like I said, we've already talked about pop and cork, so I don't wanna be redundant, I wanna cover that one. I want to talk about a different way that you've seen Corey and I fish live shrimp. And that's just a straight jig head. You can take a straight jig head. This is a 3JD twist lock. Any jig head will work, painted or plain, it doesn't matter. And we tie straight braid to our jig heads. 20 pound, 30 pound, 15 pound, whatever you throw. 
and we tie our braid straight to the jig head, no leader. And this is that application we were talking about with the Carolina rig, where you can hook a lot of redfish under deep docks and deep structure, but you lose the fish because the pylons are covered in barnacles and oysters, and when the fish run, they cut you off. Take that same braid, tie it straight to your jig head, straight to it with your favorite knot, tail hook that live shrimp the way we talked about, toss that weighted shrimp underneath the dock. The jig head is going to take him to the bottom, straight to the bottom, and he's going to sit there. If a redfish is under a dock or under a boat or under a pier or up against a seawall or wherever he's at, as soon as that thing hits the bottom, within a minute you should have a bite. Um, if the fish aren't there, like we talked about prospecting, bring it back in, throw it to a dock or pile and let it sink. Give it a minute or two. Let him sit, nothing, bring it back in and continue prospecting those docks. Think of a bass fisherman working a dock for a bass. He throws every single pylon under a dock, skips it under the dock to the other side and works it back. Same thing with this application. The favorite time, the only time I use a straight jig head to braid is dock fishing. And you want to work it. Pull up, throw your iPod down, power pole down, anchor down, whatever your technique for holding your boat into a position. Just throw your braid straight to your jig head and put your shrimp on him tail hooked and then work that dock systematically. A lot of times what you find on large docks and structure is people will roll up and they'll fish it and they'll give it five, 10 minutes and not get a bite or the pinfish and the croaker are stealing your shrimp, they pick up and leave. It takes patience because if you think of a large structure, a large dock or a large flat, the redfish sometimes are just laying there. They're just sitting there in the shade waiting, but sometimes they're grazing. Redfish move a lot and they graze around. It may take 15 minutes for that school, that herd of redfish to come back through where you're at. And as soon as they come back, they're feeding, they're gonna grab the shrimp immediately. So work one systematically. Get in there and find an area. Give it 10 minutes, work the pylons. It doesn't work, move down 10, 15 feet. Work the pylons, work that section of the dock. Go from deep to shallow, go from shallow to deep. The dock is 15 feet, the fish may be holding in two feet. Just because you pull up at the 15 foot deep on the very end of the dock, you throw that jig head straight to braid underneath it, and it sits there for 15 minutes, you and a couple buddies, you don't get a bite and you leave. Be patient, come around the side of that dock, and continue doing that same thing all the way down it. Give it time, work that structure 100%, don't leave any stone unturned. And if you do that all the way to the bank and I get a bite, then you can with confidence say, okay, the fish aren't here, it's time to move. Go to the next dock, do the same thing. But what you'll find out, this application is bar none number one for fishing docks and deep structure. The only time I use it, I will not throw this on a flat, I will not throw this over an oyster bar, I won't work this back in a a marsh has a lot of better techniques that are more efficient and a more subtle presentation. This is straight banging docks. Anyway guys, this is the technique for dock monster fishing. This is the only time I use it. This is very effective. This doesn't work on a flat. It doesn't work on an oyster bar. It doesn't work for me at the jetties. This has a single application and that is fishing deep docks. Whether the dock is two feet or 20 feet, this is how I fish them. I throw it underneath the dock let it sink, give it a few minutes, and continue that process. So guys, this is my fifth and final way to rig a live shrimp, and that is a jig head straight to braid, dock monster style with a tail pinned live shrimp. This is a great technique, guys. I, I know there's some of you guys that are trying the dock monster. I know there's some of you guys that are trying that technique of fishing. I know a lot of you guys that already do this, and you're tired of losing fish or getting broke off. Give this a try and see what you think. If it works for you, shoot us a message and let us know that it worked. This is the way to catch dock monsters, guys, in this fifth and final way to rig live shrimp. All right, guys, there you have it. That's my three favorite ways to rig a live shrimp and my five favorite ways to fish a live shrimp. Again, like I say in every one of these videos, I'm not a pro, I'm not an expert, I'm not a subject matter expert. I'm just a guy who loves fishing and a guy who loves teaching and these are my opinions and how I like to do it. And they've been successful for me and they've worked over the years. I wanna share what works with me with you guys. So if you, you try these techniques and they work and you appreciate the information, drop us a thumbs up, drop us a comment and tell us it worked for you. Send us a picture. We love sending pictures of what you guys have caught doing stuff that you learned or from watching our videos. We really enjoy that. We get a kick out of seeing it guys. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. Y'all stay tuned for a fresh Sunday video. And as usual, we'll have Wednesday videos coming out on how to's. 
Uh, we've also been putting community posts on our YouTube page asking you guys what you want to see from us on how to's. Every week about Monday I'll post a question with a poll. You guys vote on the video you'd like to see most on Wednesdays. We record it and upload it for you guys Wednesday morning at 05. Thank you very much. We appreciate all the support. The channel's growing. We couldn't do it without you guys. Uh, we're very excited and uh, we appreciate everything you guys are doing for us. And uh, we'll see you out there. Yoo! There you have it, guys. My opinion. That's the three best ways to rig a live shrimp. The easiest ways to rig it. And that's the best application. What is it? Five different ways to use them. Different times and places. Guys, I'm telling you, this may not be the absolute 100% gospel on when, where, or why to use live shrimp. But this has worked for me for a lot of years. Recreational fishing, guiding, and tournament fishing. I'm telling you, these ways work. Put them in your arsenal. And then you're going to find ways to tweak it. You're going to find ways to do it a little bit differently. This is just a basis for you to begin fishing with live shrimp and different options depending on the scenario you find yourself in. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, I hope this helps someone out there. I really appreciate all the positivity, guys. Thank you for everything. Uh, remember to like, subscribe. We'll see you guys out there.